we are back saturday welcome to becoming eva we're talking about surviving the holidays yes facts on facts the holidays are a lot they can be a lot and it's a joyful time it's a fun time prayerfully but then also we have a lot of other things that can kind of creep in like stress and depression and loneliness and you know even grief you know especially now that you know we're in in the middle of a pandemic a lot of people have lost loved ones to covid and so this may be their first holiday without a loved one and so we just kind of want to run the gamut of the highs and lows that come with the holidays and hopefully give you a couple tips and tricks on how to you know make it a great thanksgiving a great christmas and a happy new year for real okay yes. so but first i had a great week let me tell you yes. about my go ahead, my, go ahead my golden child mason <laughs> let me tell you about mr mason this week he is the one and the only child that said mama before dada. Oh. So, you know, I've been on cloud nine. I do. He said mama. And then <laughs> yesterday, Ryan was like, say dada. You know what Mason did? He shook his head. No. Oh. It said, Mama. <laughs> Why you gotta play Ryan like that, though? Why you gotta play Ryan like that? That's a mess. Oh, That's a mess. How was your week? Oh my gosh, I'm I'm reeling off of that. I yeah, I'm gonna pray for Ryan because I know I know how much he was looking forward to this boy. He's gonna come around eventually. He is, but in the meanwhile, take it all in, Toya. Take it all in. I am for real. Wow. But I, I will say my week was good as well. It was busy, but it was good. Like just really sensing God's grace, you know, on my job and just regarding my health and other endeavors that, you know, my husband and I are working on. I really have just sensed his hand, like I got you. And I feel like probably these last two months have been um, looking from the outside in may be deemed overwhelming or taxing or busy even but I feel like God has kind of used it as an opportunity to just move me out the way and be like I got this and at the end of the day you can't give credit to nobody else but me so I'm like okay God I think I kind of see what you're doing although I may not understand fully or may not even like it all the time but I think I'm starting to get it and so yeah it's been good though really good thank you for asking all right. So this week on Married at First Sight, today or this week was decision day. So if you don't know anything about this show, mm -hmm. basically the premise of the show is that these group of experts match couples together based on a bunch of questions that they fill out. And so they match mm -hmm. them together and they don't meet each other into the wedding day. They get oh married. Gosh. And they have eight weeks that they go on a honeymoon, they live together for eight weeks. And then at the end of eight weeks, they decide whether to stay married or get a divorce. And so I had some predictions. Okay. Um, I know like a bunch of people that love watching this show, like I was really getting into it uh, this season. So the first couple, um, Gil and Myrna, um, Gil, you know, he was kind of more like a simple guy and Myrna was mm. definitely high maintenance. Mm. Um, you know, she made a lot of money, had savings. She liked to spend a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so Gil, you know, he was a little hesitant about, you know, her spending habits and things mm -hmm. like that, but they decided to stay married. So I wow. made that prediction. Um, she was kind of like conservative at first. She's like, mm, you can kiss my cheek like I don't know you yet like <laughs> and you know Gil was letting her know you gotta give me a little something of it or we gonna get a divorce as, as called as married yeah first. <laughs> right <laughs> we got to consummate right at, at some point but they mm -hmm. ended up consummating um they said like two weeks before decision day wow um so they ended up staying married Bao and Johnny um, this was the Asian couple, um, Bao, well, first off, Johnny was completely mean to Bao throughout the entire eight weeks, almost, See? 
Um, and she kept like trying and staying with him. So on decision day, Johnny's like, he wants to stay married. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? You were so mean to Bell. And Bell was like, it's a little too late. I was like, good for you. So she All right. they got divorced. Okay. Um Brett uh and Ryan. That was uh whew. a week before decision day. Ryan decides to get on the dating app and Brett's friend screenshots him on the dating out dating app and sends it to brett and she's like dude you, you couldn't wait a whole week so exactly. i really i really think that ryan just didn't find her um attracted to him yeah. um not his type so they ended mm-hmm. up getting a divorce i knew that okay. one was coming uh now michaela and zach that was the black couple uh-huh. <laughs> i don't know if you saw any little clips but you know, Michaela, she was a little, a little, a little crazy. Oh no. <laughs> she had kept having like adult temper tantrums is what I call them. Like getting like explosive, um, anger, like issues and like hmm. knocking furniture out of the way, like crazy stuff. And so Zach was like, mm, you look <laughs> But they they had consummated the marriage the first night they got married. Mm-hmm. And Zach was, you know, totally in awe of the bedroom because he kept saying, well, I mean, are you going to spend the night? Can you spend the night? Like, even though they kept getting into all these, like, heated arguments. arguments yeah. But uh, <laughs> on decision day, he starts, he's like a man that doesn't know what he wants. But he starts talking about how oh, like, you're the best woman that I, um, I've ever met, like, second to my mom, and um, I love this woman, and she's, you know, yada, 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 and so Michaela says so she wants to stay married and keep, like, working on herself, mm-hmm. and, and then after he says all that, he was like, yeah, I, I want a divorce. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> so the experts were like, I'm so confused because he kept, he was trying to say like, he wanted to divorce her, but he wanted yeah. to continue to hang out and see, <laughs> and see what, like what it would, what this relationship would grow mm. into. See this face. Yeah. Right. It sounded like he wanted his cake and eat it too. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. Mm, not the most. And then the last couple, Rachel, Rachel and Jose, Jose had like a little, temper little anger issues they Mm. got into an argument one night um apparently rachel called jose somebody else's name and so they got into an argument and she like left the apartment and he Mm. locked her out of the apartment like deadbolt locked her out and so she ended up calling like an ex-boyfriend or something because he would not let her in the apartment so they had a big blowout um and when they were arguing like he was calling her out her name just like all kinds of crazy stuff and um I was like if he's doing that on camera like yeah. what how is he going to act when the cameras are off exactly um, but they ended up like reconciling and he asked for forgiveness you know yada 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 and they decided to stay married I was a little shocked by that one Mm, I'm a little scared about that one, quite honestly. Yeah. I don't want them to end up in the news later. Like, really. Right. Yes. Right. That's what's trending next week. They're doing like the reunion. So we'll okay. see. We'll see like if people are still like happily married or <laughs> on their way to get divorce. <laughs> you a good one. You a good one. I don't know. I just get mad just listening to the title. I'm like married at first sight. Like who in the world? But it is some great, it's some, it's some great drama for you. So keep us posted, please, on that reunion, please. Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, I was going to say, honestly, we could jump in, into our topic. You, are you ready to jump on in? Yeah. Okay, cool. So holidays are coming up. And first and foremost, let's talk a little bit about stress. I mean, as much as we don't want to admit it, or some people do want to admit it, 
the holiday season can be really stressful. And that's like, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you have kids or not, because you're trying to figure out where you're going to go, who you're going to spend the holidays with, how you're going to get there. And then of course, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So you're trying to figure out, okay, is it safe? Do I feel comfortable? What are the extra precautions I need to take? And then depending on where you're going, people may have protocols like, are you vaccinated? Are you going to wear a mask? Like all kinds of stuff. So let's talk about the stress of the holidays. Like First of all, are you sensing any stress, Toya? I mean, I know you got the big family, you got the new little one. Like, what are y'all planning for the holidays and how are you feeling about everything? So for Thanksgiving, we're lo- keeping it low key. We're mm-hmm. just going to um, spend Thanksgiving with Ryan's mom. So my mm-hmm. mother-in-law um, and my sister-in-law and her family. And Thanksgiving is usually like low stress. Okay, I kinda, good. I kind of like um, Thanksgiving. It's just like a, mm-hmm. you know, fun, um, fun day. I don't mm-hmm. usually have to cook. Thank God. Praise the Lord for that one. Um, <laughs> I don't usually have to cook. Um, but I, I mean, I know how to cook some Thanksgiving food if, if I had to. But thankfully, I have not really had to do a whole lot of like Thanksgiving preparations because I'm usually going to his house his mom's house or we travel to Missouri um, but we're not traveling this year Christmas is a little bit more stressful for okay. us <laughs> definitely more stressful um, because there's so many expectations um, from our little ones mm-hmm. um, you know we've got four now so yeah everybody's got a little Christmas list and you know what <laughs> what I want man. and you checking it twice like oh, yes <laughs> <laughs> and you know we hold it over their heads you know like uh are you acting up you know Ooh. Christmas is right around the corner <laughs> Now, do y'all do any type of limits as far as the number of items on the list or like, uh, I mean, they may be too young for you to be like, okay, we're staying under a certain amount, but do you do any type of, set any type of expectations regarding that? So this year I'm being a little bit more stern. Um, Normally last year, um, we just made sure that they all had the same amount of gifts. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, it could be, okay, well, if she, and then they rack up gifts from like other people too. Yeah. So we, I just try to keep a tally of, okay, this one's getting this, getting mm-hmm. that. This one's getting this. Okay. This one has four gifts and this mm-hmm. one has three. I need to get her something else. Or, you know, yeah. I try to even it out. Gotcha. Um, so that on Christmas day, you know, they're like, not one person's got like a whole tower of gifts and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the other other ones have like a, a small amount um so I try to even it out um mm-hmm. for gifts from me now godparents um may send mm-hmm. like one gifts and not the other so sometimes mm-hmm. you know it, it does get a little uneven but yeah. I don't think they really notice that because they share all of their toys anyway Aww. so it's not like really a, a huge deal but like yeah. if I get like them some outfits or something I might like make it into like two gifts. So they have, you know, another gift to open, but there you go. No, that's real. I was going to say some parents will take, like if their kids have excessive birthday gifts or things like that, they may tuck some of those away until the holidays or later on in the year, because number one, the kid don't notice it or they're not going to play with it right away. And it's like, depending on that age, you kind of figure out, you know, when you, when you can do get away with stuff like that and when you can't, but there is nothing wrong with that at all. And yeah. I always tell people, take advantage of those younger ages, especially when kids are like, oh, I like the wrapping paper more than the gift, or I like the box more than the gift. I'm like, don't go broke for the kids. You get what they need, you know, yes. and they'll be just as happy because you'll have plenty of time when they're like, I want the newest this and I want the most expensive <laughs> that, you know, you have plenty of time for that. So Take advantage yes. of those times when they like, you know, I'm gonna play with this paper in this box. <laughs> right. <laughs> so this year I said, um, you can pick two things, put only two things on the list. And I gave them a little book and I was like, you can circle two, two items. Aww, just two. Yeah. And so I plan to give them two that they want. Mm-hmm. One, 
item that they need Mm -hmm. um and then like a book something like educational um but still I know like grandparents are gonna send gifts and you know aunties uncles godparents so they already have like more than enough I'm not going broke Mm -hmm. (laughs) trying to get them stuff um I mean I think it's more fun to um do like the tradition the traditions that we've set in place like we have like our um Christmas cookies and decorating the Christmas tree Mm -hmm. and watching Christmas movies and Mm -hmm. then we do our PJs like um I'll give them oh yeah that's another gift I do give them like a PJs uh the night before Christmas like I let them open up one gift but I mean eventually they'll figure out it's PJ it's like that should be there tomorrow (laughs) you know (laughs) I love it I love it um like you know and then we have our annual junk food party which is usually a couple days before Christmas that's fun um yeah and we just uh we decorate um gingerbread houses and Mm -hmm. ornaments and um this year we're gonna uh incorporate some arts uh like with Ryla pa- playing the piano and mm-hmm. play the dancing getting the other kids to sing or do like some type of performance or whatever yeah. and then we have like some adult games and it's just like mm-hmm. chill and junk food and just a lot of fun so that's good I think I like the um the more of uh the things that we do mm-hmm. um versus like the gifts yeah that's what makes the holidays yeah Yeah. being with your family and being with your friends you know we initially started especially once we got our house was the plan was to alternate and host thanksgiving like every other year so we hosted our first thanksgiving here in the house and i absolutely loved it i was just so it was just so great having a full house and having my aunts and uncles here and cousins and you know my husband's family was here and us just all just kicking back eating good food and having a good time like I was so sad to see everybody go and then of course COVID hit so we were like okay (laughs) everybody back to your corners you know but we're planning to start that up hopefully next year so but we've honestly for Thanksgiving in particular use it to really like pretty low very similar to what you were saying where we eat good food and we kick back and relax and we really try to treat that as a relaxing extended weekend um in preparation for Christmas I mean we may spend some time we'll usually spend some time decorating the house for Christmas around that time that may be kind of like our only busy thing but You know, and I cook every year, honestly, whether we're going somewhere or not, just because my husband's like, well, I want you to make so-and-so and and what are we going to have at the house? And both. so I I have to train myself though, to not cook for an army all the time. Cause you know how you cook, like you cooking for everybody when it really is just like three, four people. So I have to remind myself in that regard um, and just kind of pull back, you know, when we don't have a full house, but, um, but yeah, Thanksgiving is definitely more chill. Um, And Christmas, quite honestly, has been somewhat chill too over the, of course, over the past couple of years. Uh, But the traditions is where we really tried to lean in, you know, for us, especially we're like, this is our family. This is our unit. Let's start to make our own traditions. And so we've really tried to be really intentional about that, like celebrating Advent. You know, I really am blessed when I have the opportunity to take time to reflect and to focus on what the time of year really is about, which is about God coming and dwelling amongst us, you know? So we've incorporated devotionals just about the birth of Jesus and what does that mean and how's that reflected in our lives. We do movies. Um, We do one Christmas movie every weekend between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And for us, it could be any Christmas movie. It doesn't have to be a traditional Christmas movie. Like one one weekend we watch Die Hard because it took place around Christmas and we love action. So, you know, it could be, or it could be a Christmas story or whatever, Charlie Brown Christmas, but whatever we're in the mood in, because we really want to be intentional about not letting this time of year pass us by. I think so many times we get caught up in just going, 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 shopping, 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 you know, being busy. And then you look up and you're like, it's the new year. And you're like, number one, did I rest? Number two, did I enjoy myself? You know, 
or was I just running around like a chicken with my head cut off and now I'm headed into the new year more wound up than I was before. So the traditions, you really hit the nail on the head. Us trying to be intentional with that has been important for us this year. We did our first family picture last year where we actually just took a photo shoot and we sent it to everybody, you know? So really trying to be intentional about those added touches because this is what the time of year is about. And I don't want it to just pass us by and we look up like, oh, what happened? Was I present, you know? So- really important. So let's talk a little bit about loneliness or depression. You know, those that may not be able to get to their families or those that may be like, gosh, okay, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. I don't feel like, feel comfortable going anywhere. You know, I'm doing another low key holiday and it may be me, myself and I, or maybe doing a Friendsgiving or something like that, but they may find themselves struggling with loneliness or depression if they're not able to get to their immediate family. Like what, are some, um, you know, some words of wisdom or some tips or tricks that we can give to people that may be struggling with that? Yeah, I would definitely say to try to expand your village where you mm, are. I remember before we, we had kids, we would even do friends giving and mm-hmm. all of our friends would get together, bring dishes for Thanksgiving. And we would have a friends giving, you know, um, just expanding the village. So if you didn't yeah. have family in town or near and you weren't traveling there was a place for you to go yeah Um, so I would definitely um definitely say expand your village do not um be on an island isolated in your apartment or your house by yourself like reach out to close friends um Mm -hmm. I'm sure um there's someone willing to open up their their house and their home to you so do not um be an island so that's what I would recommend yeah, your family is what you make it, you know, so if it's and and honestly, if you feel like, okay, nobody has invited me anywhere, then you invite someone, you know, what I'm saying you open up your home, you know, and say, hey, I'm cooking, feel free to come over, kick back, relax, it doesn't have to be anything grand. But you know, show yourself friendly, if you don't feel like anyone else is showing themselves friendly, and you will be surprised. And then the right. other thing I would say, too, is this is a great time of year to serve. I know I have been trying to be more and more intentional about ways in which I can serve people during this time of year. If it is donating food to families that are in need or delivering meals to the elderly or the sick and shut in, designating time to give up yourself usually makes you feel better in the process. And so that's also a great way to deal with, you know, if you find yourself feeling lonely or just a little down and it's like, you're struggling to kind of get into the season, get into the holiday feel. Yes. And I would say I definitely make my kids give back to you. Um, every, around this time of year, we get a box together and I make mm-hmm. them uh, fill the box with toys um, that they would like to donate and give away and I make them fill it up I'm like you have Christmas coming around the corner you guys yep. have more than enough like you don't even play with half of these things anyway mm-hmm. and I just don't want them to get so you know materialistic and just understand the importance of giving stuff away yeah because um, they have more than enough Absolutely. And I I personally, as you know, as I have grown older, have really found that I get more excited about seeing how people respond to the gifts that I give versus concerned with what I'm going to get. Like, you know, I really try to be more intentional with getting people things that I know that they want or that they'll enjoy. And just the look on people's faces when it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you remembered that. Or I can't believe you thought of that or whatever. Like, To me, that gives me more joy at times than what I received. And so it really helps make that shift as well, you know? So it's awesome that you're starting that early, Toya. That's great. Yeah. Um, And I would say to help kind of simplify um, your holidays, uh, we've started, uh, we've been doing another tradition called Elfster, um, where... Uh, we set a limit, um, so $50, and this is for the adults because, mm-hmm. you know, we know the kids are going to get gifts, but this is so that we're not breaking the bank trying to get everybody something. Right. So with Elster, um, we set the limit at 50 You 
put a list of things that you may want it could even just be like oh give me a gift card from macy's or if you Mm -hmm. have like something in mind you just add it to the list and then um once we're ready to draw names you just click a button and elster like uh draws names for you and then you just buy a gift for that one person versus trying to buy gifts for everybody Um, so that's something that we do as well and that is definitely uh money saving um Mm -hmm. for sure that's good now we we do that do that with the adults in our family too but the elster elster app is a great recommendation to automate it that's really cool yeah cool anything else on how we can you know navigate stress loneliness or depression around the holidays yeah um just making sure you make time for yourself too and Mm. not getting so wrapped up in you know the hustle and bustle and trying to buy different things just make some time for yourself um I know I'm trying to schedule time to go go to a theater play with uh just some adults you know get some adult time in Mm -hmm. and just to relax and enjoy and just not just be so wrapped up in all the buying of gifts and (laughs) you know all that stuff Um, because it's just stuff and Mm -hmm. you know they're not going to remember what they got when they were five years old for Christmas and you know they're not gonna remember that stuff so just making time to like really enjoy um the time of year uh make time for yourself do something fun, go, go to a play, go to a theater, something. Um, I know, uh, one year I took the kids to see the Nutcracker and stuff like that. And I was like, that's a gift right there. Cause those tickets cost money. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, they do. <laughs> so yeah, just make time for yourself. That's good. Now that's a great point. And I, I would tell people, don't be afraid to block stuff, block time off on your calendar, you know, for days off, um, you know, clock out early if you have that luxury, but build in time in your schedule this time of year, especially because people are doing it, whether you're one of them or not. So you may as well be one of them. And of course, you know, exercise, you know, wisdom and, and discernment and still make sure that you're, you know, above reproach and how you're doing stuff, but make sure you are intentional about taking time for yourself and slowing down like do not let this time of year just pass you by because if you get to January and you ain't done nothing for yourself you're gonna be mad that's all I'm gonna say you're gonna be a Grinch (laughs) after Christmas for real make sure you do it and you don't even have to have a plan when you do it just say okay guess what I'm taking this Friday off or guess what I am, you know, going to buy tickets for this or that and the other, or I'm going to plan on this Saturday to not do anything at all, or only what I want to do. Like, it doesn't have to be anything grand, like, oh, I bought these tickets and I'm flying out of town or whatever, because you're trying to prove that you need the time. Like, just take the time and use it however you please, like for real. So very good point. All right. So shall we dive into, oh, this is getting a little sticky, but unforgiveness and resentment. I find that the holidays can sometimes be triggering for that. And sometimes you may not even realize that you're harboring unforgiveness or that you're harboring resentment until you run into somebody at the family dinner or somebody's name pops up on your phone and you feel in some type of way, or you get a Christmas card in the mail and you like, you know, like really it could be just different things that may trigger those ugly emotions that we don't always want to admit. So I will say first and foremost, have you ever experienced that? I have. And I think it's kind of related to like the whole daddy issues, Mm -hmm. um, the topic that we talked about a few weeks ago. Um, But since he wasn't really a part of my life growing Mm -hmm. up as as a child, um, I know that my parents struggled financially to take care of all of us. And I was one of those kids that would kind of go with the flow. Like I knew my parents were struggling. I wasn't going to ask for like an expensive gift. I was Mm -hmm. like, you know, you can give me whatever. I was very like easygoing. Um, But sometimes I, I, 
I would feel a certain way. Like I remember mm-hmm. talking to him on the phone as a kid and telling him my different sizes. And, you know, he was telling us he was going to like send stuff and then weeks would go by and we wouldn't yeah. get anything. And, wow. um, I just know that it, as a kid, when you're in that world and you're looking forward to different things and, you know, kind of get a little disappointed, right. um, that sometimes comes up in the back of my mind. Um, and I think about that with my kids, like, mm. you know, I want to make sure that I'm there for them and that we're there for them. And, you know, we get them a, a couple of things that they want because it's mm-hmm. important to them, uh, in this stage of life that they're in. But sometimes I do, have to keep that in check. Um, now that I'm trying to reconcile the relationship with him, mm-hmm. um, just not trying to hold on to grudges and harbor, harbor those ill feelings that I have yeah, or, or had about him. Yeah, absolutely. I will say for me, um, at times I may find myself struggling with resentment or even comparing myself to others, especially when Christmas cards come in and, you know, everybody sends the cute pictures of their families and their children and everything. And I think for the longest time, I felt like I had to be at a certain place or my family had to be at a certain place or a certain size in order to be a part of that, if you will. And like, I've really just had to remind myself that our family is our family and we celebrate our family you know, just like any other family. And so really honing in and giving myself permission to celebrate our family now as it is without waiting for a child or waiting even in some cases for a house or waiting for this huge accomplishment to be like, hey, look what we did. It's like, no, this is our family and we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, you know, and I can celebrate your family just like I celebrate my family. So really, um, I would say coming to a place where I felt free enough to do that. And then I have found that as I have given myself permission to celebrate our family as it is, it has made me much more open and accepting to celebrating other people's families as they are, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? And I love those Christmas cards that you sent last year too with you and oh, Chris. So yeah, celebrate. Girl, celebrate now. Do not wait for perfect conditions because they may never come. You celebrate today. Wow. Because today's all we have. It is Correct. all we have, you know. Um, tomorrow's not promised to anyone. So that for me has been a, a big thing. And I'm trying to think if I have struggled, I mean, maybe in the past, um, but unforgiveness can definitely creep up. And so I would just say, really um, be sensitive when those emotions come up, you know, don't try to sweep them under the rug or to ignore them because they will find their way back to the surface. Um, And it could be at an even more inopportune time. Um, But I would say for me, when, when I notice feelings like that coming up, sometimes I just have to step back and journal and really talk to God and say, why am I feeling this way? If I can't eat, put my finger on it, I may be feeling some type of way and I'm trying to figure out, okay, why, why do I feel that type of way? And so really taking time to be still, to ask a God to write it out and see what comes to the surface and not be afraid of what comes to the surface. And, um, you know, based on what God reveals, it may require a phone call or it may require you actually writing out a letter and actively forgiving that person for based on whatever is identified. Because at the end of the day, you want to be free and clear. Like you want to be whole. You don't want to be bound, especially this time of year. I mean, we celebrate and, you know, the birth of the savior who came to make us free. So why not walk in it? But I would just say, don't shy away from those feelings when they come up. Like really ask God to reveal to you if you don't know. Sometimes you may know, okay, this is why I feel this way. And (laughs) you just need to choose to deal with it in that moment, you know? And again, there's nothing wrong with, you know, seeking a third party if you need to look at a therapist or a counselor or, you know, or just a sounding board, someone that you can talk to. But I would encourage you 
to try to address those emotions, to take, to build in the time to address those emotions as they come up. Because if you ignore them or sweep them under the rug, you know, that's how you get those, you know, those dinner party, <laughs> those famous dinner scenes where people yelling at each other over the table or walking out of the room. That's how you get those types of scenes because you didn't take the time initially to deal with it up front, you know, and that can be right. hard. It's definitely uncomfortable. I, I will be the first, second and third person to tell you that, but at the same time, it's very freeing. It's very liberating once you have done it. And I always tell people forgiveness is for you. It's not for the other person. So don't expect this grandiose oh i'm so glad you came to me and now we're going to be best friends you know that may or may not happen but at the same time you know it's for you so that you can be set free and so that your relationship with god you know that line of communication can be open and free because god is like okay until you let that go i'm a i'm gonna have to you know put some stuff on pause like right you know Right. I definitely can relate. Um, I definitely think if you don't figure out how to confront those feelings and deal with it, it can definitely create a hardened heart um, yeah. toward that person Absolutely. and can create anxiety and stress when you have to interact and be near that person. Mm -hmm. um, so you definitely want to address um, unforgiveness and resentment for sure. Okay. And like, I know I've shared with uh, Becoming Eva before, but for me, I had to uh, write a letter and then like meet with him afterwards mm -hmm. and really discuss my concerns and issues and, you know, my unforgiveness that I, I had had down on the inside that I didn't even realize was still there when I thought I had let it go, but it yeah. was still there. And it, it may not be easy. It may not be comfortable, but it is definitely necessary. So I commend you. I definitely commend you for taking that step. That's huge. Huge. Anything else on unforgiveness and resentment that you can think of how to navigate those emotions, especially this time of year? Now, let's move on to grief. Yeah, grief, grief and loss, I will say. And first of all, um, what I am learning, what I am as I as I, you know, grow in, in years and experience is that grief is not always attached to losing a person. It could be losing an ideal or an expectation or a plan that you thought things were going to go a certain way or a job or whatever, like grief could be associated with loss of anyone or anything. So we'll, we'll talk about both. Um, but for me, the topic of grief is, is very near and dear to my heart, especially around the holidays, because I have lost um, pretty much all of my immediate family that I grew up with. Both of my parents passed away within two years of each other. And then my sister passed away shortly thereafter. And so, um, Thankfully, I grew up with a very close extended family, like my aunts and uncles, you know, we've had years where we all may have lived in the same house together or my cousins. So at least on my mom's side. So on my mom's side, my aunts and uncles have really kind of stepped to the plate, like, and stepped in as my parents, as my second set of parents. And then my cousins are very much like siblings to me. And so all that to say, um, I'm grateful for them, but I've had to do a lot of work as it relates to the grieving process. And I'm a type A personality, so I like to plan things out. So, you know, when I first lost my parents in particular, um, and I'll, I'll start with my mom because I was closest to my mom, I, you know, always wanted like my time of breaking down, if you will, or crying or whatever to be like during my quiet time or when I wasn't in public. And God was like, you don't have any control over this process. Like you have none whatsoever. And what you'll find is you'll experience different triggers, you know? And so for me, it could have been watching a commercial or walking in the grocery store and you may see something or remember something that makes you think of that person and how you respond in that moment, you may not have full control over, like you may become very emotional. Um, and so I had to give myself grace and space for those moments as well. And it's very, for me, it was very uncomfortable and embarrassing because I, I like to be put together. I like to be in control and I like to, you know, plan and know how things are going to play out. And God was like, you can't do that here. 
And so I've, I've had to learn to do that. And for me, the holidays tend to be very hard for me, um, you know, without having my physical, my parents here physically with me. And so I've had to learn to kind of reinvent how I celebrate the holidays, you know, and some cases it may look like doing nothing that I have done in the past. Like I think the first year that my mother passed away, I was planning to, after her passing, I was planning to go to Hawaii. I was like, I just need like a vacay. I just need a change of venue. You know, um, I didn't, I think I ended up going at, like to Puerto Rico or something like that following year or something. But for me, travel, just change of venue was something that I needed because anything that resembled what we used to do was a trigger for me because my mother was no longer physically there. And then it kind of transitioned into, okay, you know, what are some things, what are some ways or some things that you can do to celebrate her legacy? And so, you know, there are certain things that I would do that we may have done in the past, but I would do it, my perspective shifted where I was like, this is to celebrate her. So cooking for me became a really big source of comfort because I would recreate a lot of her meals and that made me feel closer to her. So that was something. And then now, as I had mentioned earlier, we're in a season where we're creating our own traditions and it may include some things we did in the past or it may not, but really giving myself the freedom to um, spend the holidays in a way that was comfortable for me and that helped me to process my grief. Um, I didn't want to be boxed into what I had always done. And I certainly didn't want to be boxed into anyone else's expectations. So I would just encourage you if you find yourself, you know, experiencing the holidays for the first time without a very special loved one, to um, give yourself grace. Mm -hmm. And it's so, and know that it's okay to, you know, this is going to be a different kind of year for you. It's going to be a different kind of holiday season for you, but there are ways that you can still celebrate the holidays and still celebrate the legacy of that person. And it doesn't have to be anything super traditional, you know, um, think about what that person enjoyed doing and maybe you want to do that or, you know, maybe you want to continue to do things that you all used to do together, whatever makes you feel comfortable in that moment, or maybe something completely left field where you like, I'm going to the circus, I don't know, but whatever it is that makes you feel comfortable in that moment and helps you to process um, grief, because the important thing about grief, like we were talking about with unforgiveness and resentment, is you got to process those emotions. You can't stifle them. You can't sweep them under the rug because they'll play themselves out in other ways. And so um, whatever you need to do in order to process them in a healthy way, but I, I highly recommend that because grieving during the holidays can be hard. It really can be. And you just want to make sure that you have some things in place so that you know you don't find yourself just a ball of tears come Thanksgiving or come Christmas, you know, but really think about how you can celebrate that person's legacy in a healthy way. Yes, those are great tips, um, Maya. I'll say uh, for me, <clears throat> when we lost our father-in-law, when our, my father-in-law, um, when he had his fall or his accident, that happened in just the month of December, Mm -hmm. Um, and so I know it's hard for Ryan when that day comes around. And then it, when I remember back to that year, um, I know we waited a, a while before we got our Christmas tree that year because, you know, we were dealing with so much, um, stress. We eventually, we went and grabbed one, um, but it was still hard for him to like really celebrate, um, you know, that year and then his birthday, um it's January the first yeah. and so we always have like a special dinner for his birthday for his heavenly birthday awesome. where we we get a uh, food that he used to love to eat and stuff like that mm -hmm. and you know we celebrate that way but I think that's an important tip to do something to uh remember um, the person that you have lost. Yes. And I always encourage people like you are their legacy. You are an extension of that person. So, you know, find a way to honor them because they live through you. They live through you now. Right. That is beautiful. Um, any uh, resources or any tips that you would share regarding grief or loss? 
um, just finding healthy ways to cope with your grief. Mm -hmm. Definitely um, facing your feelings. If you need to talk to a therapist or a counselor, Mm -hmm. um, don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help. Find ways to express your gift, maybe through a creative way like art. Um, There's something called music therapy. Uh, This past week, um, my job had kind of like a self-care day when we had our in-person meeting. And so I had never really heard of music therapy, but they had music therapy going on. They had um, canvas painting, yoga, hiking, um, all kinds of different events and activities that you were able to do for your self-care time. Uh, I chose painting, but um, yeah, just find a creative way um, to express your gift. music therapy. Um, I didn't, I didn't go to that one, but that sounded interesting. Um, so check out maybe some music therapy, um, and just structure, structure your time and your day to maybe keep busy. So you kind of distracted from, uh, concentrating on that grief and really thinking about it. Um, and maybe some, maybe grief therapy, um, mm-hmm. those are some tips. Yeah, there are some great grief support groups out there. Um, and so um, definitely finding people that you can connect with that may have experienced loss as well, because grief to me is still one of those taboo topics where not everybody uh, either knows how to respond when someone has lost someone or they may find it challenging to talk about. So oftentimes you may have to find someone that has gone through a similar situation and that is open to talking about it. Um, because other times, you know, some people just don't necessarily know what to say and, and don't knock people that don't know what to say either. Cause it's awkward. It's awkward when people lose somebody, you know, um, sometimes they just don't know what to say or what to do. So they don't do anything or they don't say anything and they act like it didn't happen. So don't hold that against people, but find someone that you can talk to that can relate and may have gone through something similar um, that feels comfortable talking about it because you want to make sure you have those outlets as well. And grief support groups are an excellent suggestion for that. Um, I, and I'll, I'll reiterate it probably during our, well, we can kind of talk about our top picks, but my top pick was actually going to be Grief Share, which is um, they have several different resources. They have books, they have support groups, they have daily emails. I know some people like to, or I won't say like to, but may not feel comfortable being in the group setting just yet, but they still need to process. And so literally you can go to Grief Share, I think it's .org, not com, but griefshare.org and just sign up for their daily emails. And you'll get one email every day for an entire year and, and they talk about everything from the practical stuff, you know, if you're having, you know, to deal with getting that person's estate together and who, you know, figuring out, you know, how to disseminate all of that to the emotional stuff, to the spiritual stuff, but you literally will get one email every day for um, the next year that runs the gamut of everything that comes with losing a loved one. So I always recommend Grief Share. And then of course they have other resources if you do want the grief support group that we're talking about where you can be around other people that have had similar experiences and and just have an outlet to talk about your feelings and your emotions and process through them that way. And then also books, curriculums, devotionals, things of that nature, because you wanna make sure that you're addressing it, that you're not stifling it, that you're not trying to push through it. I can't emphasize that enough, especially in the black community and, you know, black women in general, we just, I feel like we just like take a licking and keep on taking, like we just push through so many different things, but we find later that it manifests itself, you know, in our bodies and our health and in our minds and, you know, and it's really important that we take time to process through this stuff because it, it will show up. If we don't process it, it's not going anywhere and we can act like it is, but it's not, it's really not. Right. Yeah. And if, if you don't, um, embrace the grieving process, I definitely think it can lead to depression and suicidal thoughts. It can lead to anger. It can lead to substance abuse, drugs, alcohol. Um, so you definitely need to find healthy ways to cope with the grief. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anything else we have for grief and loss, navigating grief and loss during the holidays? 
Well, I kind of kicked it off with some top picks, but you have any other top picks you want to share? Um, I'm going to give give myself a plug um, right. in this category. <laughs> My first book, The One yes. Who Was um, I had lost my um, ex-boyfriend in a car accident. Um, we had been dating for about four years mm. and we had a really terrible breakup. Um, and then about a month later, he was killed in a car accident. Wow. So I really, really struggled um, with grief. Uh, during that time period in my life, because after four years, you, you know, you have ideas of marriage and kids. Um, He had gotten close to my family. I had gotten close to his family. So we were very much connected in each other's worlds. So the breakup was difficult because, you know, we had to, well, I had to navigate through those emotions of um, grieving the loss of him, grieving the loss of his family. And I was basically here in Georgia by myself. So I didn't really have a lot of people that I could really lean on for support. And so I started journaling and my journal eventually became a book and it was called the one who restores, which kind of, um, journeyed my um, grieving process from the day that we met to the the accident and what led to the breakup and then how I was able to navigate through those different seasons and seasons in my life because it was definitely hard because you know we had spent time together during the holidays and um, you know I would think about that when it those times of years would come up and like I said I was here by myself and I didn't have family so I was really uh, leaning on God and learning the ways in which God was uniquely speaking to me um, during that time Um, and then the restoration part of it um, with me meeting Ryan and that journey and that story of how everything kind of came full circle so Amen. that's my plug for my top pick girl you better plug it now tell people where they can find it yes the one who restores you can find on amazon um on my website at kashan books that's my publishing website so yeah there's multiple ways that you can purchase the book yes good stuff thank you for sharing that any other top picks that you can think of? Anything good you watching or reading or, you know, listening to? No, that's that's it for me this week. Um, you know, my kiddos have, have been keeping me busy and on my toes. So not a lot of time to really un- watch TV and <laughs> do all that other stuff. I'm just trying to get to the break on Friday. Hold on, girl. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> all right so in the meanwhile you want to share our be challenge for the week yeah you didn't have another top pick that you wanted to share oh you know what i will say on a lighter note i did watch the the harder they fall last weekend and i really enjoyed it i really did okay. so i know we were talking a little bit about that with last week's guest and she was like i'm about to kick back and watch it and i was like i think i might too so we watched that last weekend and really enjoyed it i want to check that out and i want to check out this new movie on netflix called I think it's called Passing, um, where I think it's about a, uh, it's set in the 1920s. It's a black Uh girl, I guess, trying to pass as white. And I think Mm -hmm. it's based on a true story. So I'm going to check that out this weekend. It's called Passing. I feel like I've heard of that before. Like, was it on another platform before Netflix? No, I think it just came out like yesterday, I think, or Thursday or something. Yeah, it sounds familiar, but yes. It's in the top 10, top 10 for this week. Ah. Right. check it out good stuff all right good people well let's get into the be challenge so the be challenge is to identify and implement one of the tips discussed on how to address loneliness depression unforgiveness 
resentment or grief and loss, something that we mentioned on today's episode. Um, don't forget to give us your topic suggestions at Becoming Even Today. Next week is our season three finale. We're going to have a couple of guests. Um, it's going to be a girl talk panel. Yes. So you don't want to miss next week. It's going to be fun. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Becoming Even Today. Yes, we will see y'all soon. See you soon. Bye.